CIET NCERT presents audio book of social science for class 8 entitled social and political life 3 this is the lesson 7 understanding marginalization from page number 80 to page number 93 let's listen to the lesson number 7 understanding marginalization page number 80 what does it mean to be socially marginalized to be marginalized is to be forced to occupy the sides of fringes and thus not be at the center of things this is something that some of you have probably experienced in the classroom or playground if you're not like most people in your class that is if your taste in music or films is different if your accent marks you out from others if you are less chatty than others in your class if you don't play the same sport that many of your classmates like if you dress differently the chances are that you will not be considered to be in by your peers so often you end up feeling that you're not with it as if what you say feel and think and how you act are not quite right or acceptable to others as in the classroom In the social environment too groups of people or communities may have the experience of being excluded their marginalization can be because they speak a different language follow different customs or belong to a different religious group from the majority community they may also feel marginalized because they are poor considered to be of low social status and viewed as being less human than others sometimes marginalized groups are viewed with hostility and fear the sense of difference and exclusion leads to communities not having access to resources and opportunities and in their inability to assert their rights they experience a sense of disadvantage and powerlessness vis-a-vis more powerful and dominant sections of society who own land are wealthy better educated and politically powerful thus marginalization is seldom experienced in one sphere economic social cultural and political factors work together to make certain groups in society feel marginalized in this chapter you will read about two communities that are considered to be socially marginalized in india today page number 81 adivasis and marginalization an adivasi family in delhi Soma and Helen are watching the Republic Day parade on TV with their grandfather. Ho oh, see, an Adivasi float. Dadu, why do they always show Adivasis as only dancing? Yes. Don't they know anything else about us? The lives of Adivasis are very rich. Most people don't know that. When I was young, our village in Odisha was beautiful. We got everything we needed from the land and the forests around us. We in turn respected the land, the forest, the river. Suddenly we were told that the forest was not ours. Forest officials and contractors cut down large parts of it. If we protested, they beat us and then took us to court where we did not have our lawyers and could not fight our cases. Then How did you survive dadu Many of us were forced to leave our homes and find seasonal work in nearby towns Then the company walas came They said there was iron ore under our land they wanted to mine it They promised jobs and money if we sold our land to them Some villagers were excited Others said this would destroy our lives and we would get nothing Some gave thumbprints not realizing they were selling their lands off Only a few were given token jobs but most of us did not sell Page number 82 Then they beat and threatened us till eventually everyone was forced to sell and abandon the land of their forefathers They had the support of the authorities our whole way of living vanished overnight O oh, dadu and our land what for our 30 acres 
we got a little money from one contractor. I never saw most of my friends again. The money hardly lasted in the city. We had no means of livelihood anymore. We were all crammed into a tiny rented room. How we missed our carefree lives, the open spaces. After a few years, your father got a job in Delhi and we all moved here. Those were very difficult times. That is why both of you did not go to school for several years. I hated going back to school. We had missed so much of our studies and other children made fun of us. We spoke Santhali at home and did not know Hindi. But now we have friends. I can even speak some English now. I wish I could have shown my friends our village before it was destroyed. You can still tell them about our village. It has a lot to teach them. One day, I'll make a movie on the story. Our story. The Adivasi story. Page number 83. You just read about how Dadu was forced to leave his village in Odisha. Dadu's story is similar to the lives of millions of Adivasis in India. You will read more about the marginalization of this community in this chapter. Who are Adivasis? Adivasis, the term literally means original inhabitants, are communities who lived and often continue to live in close association with forests. Around 8% of India's population is Adivasi. And many of India's most important mining and industrial centres are located in Adivasi areas. That are Jamshedpur, Rurkela, Bokaro and Bhilai among others. Adivasis are not a homogeneous population. There are over 500 different Adivasi groups in India. Adivasis are particularly numerous in states like Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, and in the northeastern states of Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, and Tripura. A state like Odisha is home to more than 60 different tribal groups. Adivasi societies are also most distinctive because there is often very little hierarchy among them. This makes them radically different from communities organized around principles of Jati Varna, that is caste, or those that were ruled by kings. Adivasis practice a range of tribal religions that are different from Islam, Hinduism and Christianity. These often involve the worship of ancestors, village and nature spirits, the last associated with residing in various sites in the landscape, that are mountain spirits, river spirits, animal spirits, etc. The village spirits are often worshipped at specific sacred grooves within the village boundary, while the ancestral ones are usually worshipped at home. Additionally, Adivasis have always been influenced by different surrounding religions like Shakti, Buddhist, Vaishnav, Bhakti and Christianity. Simultaneously, Adivasi religions themselves have influenced dominant religions of the empires around them. For example, the Jagannath cult of Odisha and Shakti and Tantric traditions in Bengal and Assam. Explain at least three different reasons why groups may be marginalized. Why was Dadu forced to leave his village in Odisha? Tribals are also referred to as Adivasis. You may have heard the term Scheduled Tribes. Scheduled Tribes is the term used for Adivasis used by the Indian government in various official documents. There is an official list of tribes. Scheduled Tribes are often grouped together with Scheduled Castes in the category Scheduled Castes and Scheduled Tribes. In your own city or village, who would you think are the marginalized groups? Discuss. Can you name some Adivasi communities that live in your state? What languages do they speak? Do they live close to the forest? Do they migrate to other regions looking for work? Page number 84 During the 19th century, substantial numbers of Adivasis converted to Christianity, which has emerged as a very important religion in modern Adivasi history. Adivasis have their own languages, most of them radically different from and possibly as old as Sanskrit. 
which have often deeply influenced the formation of mainstream Indian languages, like Bengali. Santhali has the largest number of speakers and has a significant body of publications including magazines on the internet or in e-zines. The above two images of tribal communities in their traditional costumes are often the only ways in which Adivasi communities are represented. This then leads us to think of them as being exotic or backward. Adivasis and Stereotyping In India, we usually showcase Adivasi communities in particular ways. Thus, during school functions or other official events or in books and movies, Adivasis are invariably portrayed in very stereotypical ways, in colourful costumes, headgear and through their dancing. Besides this, we seem to know very little about the realities of their lives. This often wrongly leads to people believing that they are exotic, primitive and backward. Often Adivasis are blamed for their lack of advancement as they are believed to be resistant to change or new ideas. You will remember that you read in your class 6 book how stereotyping particular communities can lead to people discriminating against such groups. Adivasis and Development As you have already read in your history textbook, forests were absolutely crucial to the development of all empires and settled civilizations in India. Metal ores like iron and copper and gold and silver, coal and diamonds, invaluable timber, most medicinal herbs, and animal products like wax, lac, honey, and animals themselves like elephants, the mainstay of imperial armies, all came from the forests. In addition, the continuation of life depended heavily on forests that help recharge many of India's rivers and, as is becoming clearer now, crucial to the availability and quality of our air and water. Page number 85 Forests covered the major part of our country till the 19th century and the Adivasis had a deep knowledge of, access to, as well as control over most of these vast tracts, at least till the middle of the 19th century. This meant that they were not ruled by large states and empires, instead often empires heavily dependent on Adivasis for the crucial access to forest resources. This is radically contrary to our image of Adivasis today as somewhat marginal and powerless communities. In the pre-colonial world, they were traditionally ranged hunter-gatherers and nomads and lived by shifting agriculture and also cultivating in one place. Although these remain, for the past 200 years Adivasis have been increasingly forced through economic changes, forest policies and political force applied by the state and private industry to migrate to live as workers in plantations, at construction sites, in industries and as domestic workers. For the first time in history, they do not control or have much direct access to the forest territories. From the 1830s onwards, Adivasis from Jharkhand and adjoining areas moved in very large numbers to various plantations in India and the world, Mauritius, the Caribbean and even Australia. India's tea industry became possible with their labour in Assam. Today, there are 70 lakh Adivasis in Assam alone. The story of this migration is full of extreme hardship, torture, heartbreak and death. For example, in the 19th century alone, 5 lakh Adivasis had perished in these migrations. The song below captures the hopes of the migrants and the reality they faced in Assam. Come, Mini, let's go to Assam. Our country has so much suffering. The country of Assam, oh Mini, has tea gardens full of greenery. The Sardar says, work, work. The Babu says, catch and bring them in. The sahib says, I'll take off the skin of your back. Hey, Jaduram, you deceived us by sending us to Assam. Source, Basu S. Jharkhand Movement, Ethnicity and Culture of Silence. What metals are important in present-day India? Why? Where do they come from? Are there Adivasi populations there? List five products that you see at home that come from the forest. By whom were the following demands being made on forest land? 
timber for construction of houses and railways, forest land for mining, forest land for agriculture by non-tribal people, reserved by government as wildlife parks. In what ways would this affect tribal people? What do you think this poem is trying to convey? Page number 86 This is a photo of Niamgiri Hill located in Kalahandi district of Odisha. This area is inhabited by Dongaria Korns, an Adivasi community. Niamgiri is the sacred mountain of this community. A major aluminium company is planning to set up a mine and a refinery here which will displace this Adivasi community. They have strongly resisted this proposed development and have been joined by environmentalists as well. A case against the company is also pending in the Supreme Court. Forest lands have been cleared for timber and to get land for agriculture and industry. Adivasis have also lived in areas that are rich in minerals and other natural resources. These are taken over for mining and other large industrial projects. Powerful forces have often colluded to take over tribal land. Much of the time, the land is taken away forcefully and procedures are not followed. According to official figures, more than 50% of persons displaced due to mines and mining projects are tribals. Another recent survey report by organizations working among Adivasis shows that 79% of the persons displaced from the states of Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Jharkhand are tribals. Huge tracts of their lands have also gone under the waters of hundreds of dams that have been built in independent India. In the northeast, their lands remain highly militarized. India has 104 national parks covering 40,501 square kilometers and 543 wildlife sanctuaries covering 1,18,918 square kilometers. These are areas where tribals originally lived but were evicted from. When they continue to stay in these forests, they are termed encroachers. Losing their lands and access to the forest means that tribals lose their main sources of livelihood and food. Having gradually lost access to their traditional homelands, many Adivasis have migrated to cities in search of work where they are employed for very low wages in local industries or at building or construction sites. They thus get caught in a cycle of poverty and deprivation. Adivasis use around 10,000 plant species. Approximately 8,000 species are used for medicinal purposes, 325 are used as pesticides, 425 as gums, raisins and dyes, 550 as fibres, 3,500 are edible. This entire knowledge system gets wiped out when Adivasis lose their rights over forest lands. Page number 87 45% of tribal groups in rural areas and 35% in urban areas live below the poverty line. This leads to deprivation in other areas. Many tribal children are malnourished. Literacy rates among tribals are also very low. When Adivasis are displaced from their lands, they lose much more than a source of income. They lose their traditions and customs, a way of living and being. They took our farming land. They left some houses. They took the cremation ground, temple, well and pond. How will we survive? Says Gobind Maran, who was displaced due to a refinery project in Odisha. As you have read, there exists an interconnectedness between the economic and social dimensions of tribal life. Destruction in one sphere naturally impacts the other. Often this process of dispossession and displacement can be painful and violent. In your opinion... Why is it important that Adivasis should have a say in how their forests and forest lands are used? Minorities and Marginalization In Unit 1, you read that the Constitution provides safeguards to religious and linguistic minorities as a part of our fundamental rights. Why do you think these minority groups have been provided these safeguards? The term minority is most commonly used to refer to communities that are numerically small in relation to the rest of the population. However, it is a concept that goes well beyond numbers. 
it encompasses issues of power, access to resources, and has social and cultural dimensions. As you read in Unit 1, the Indian Constitution recognized that the culture of the majority influences the way in which society and government might express themselves. In such cases, size can be a disadvantage and can lead to the marginalization of relatively smaller communities. Thus, safeguards are needed to protect minority communities against the possibility of being culturally dominated by the majority. They also protect them against any discrimination and disadvantage that they may face. Given certain conditions, communities that are small in number relative to the rest of society may feel insecure about their lives, assets and well-being. Page number 88 The sense of insecurity may get accentuated if the relations between the minority and majority communities are fraught. The constitution provides these safeguards because it is committed to protecting India's cultural diversity and promoting equality as well as justice. As you have already read in Chapter 5, the judiciary plays a crucial role in upholding the law and enforcing fundamental rights. Every citizen of India can approach the courts if they believe their fundamental rights have been violated. Now let us understand marginalization in the context of the Muslim community. Muslims and marginalization According to 2011 census, Muslims are 14.2% of India's population and are considered to be a marginalized community in India today because in comparison to other communities, they have over the years been deprived of the benefits of socio-economic development. The data in the three tables below, derived from different sources, indicate the situation of the Muslim community with regard to basic amenities, literacy and public employment. Read the tables below. What do you think these tables tell us about the socio-economic status of the Muslim community? 1. Access to basic amenities 2008 to 2009 Religious community Hindu Pakka house 65.4 Electricity 75.2 Tap water 43.7 Religious community Muslim Pakka house 63.8 Electricity 67.5 Tap water 35.8 Religious community Christian Pakka house 69.3 Electricity 86.2 Tap water 48.0 Religious community Sikh Pakka house 91.3 Electricity 96.0 Tap water 49.3 Which of these communities have the most and the least access to basic amenities? Page number 89 2. Literacy rate by religion 2011 Percentages All 74 Hindus 63 Muslims 57 Christians 74 Six, 67 Buddhists 71 Jains 86 Which of these communities have the highest and the lowest literacy rate? 3. Public employment of Muslims in percentages Population 13.5 IAS 3 IPS 4 IFS 1.8 Central Public Sector Unit PSU 3.3 State PSU 10.8 Banks and RBI 2.2 What do these figures convey? Recognizing that Muslims in India were lagging behind in terms of various development indicators, the government set up a high-level committee in 2005. Chaired by Justice Rajinder Sachar, the committee examined the social, economic and educational status of the Muslim community in India. The report discusses in detail the marginalization of this community. It suggests that on a range of social, economic and educational indicators, 
The situation of the Muslim community is comparable to that of other marginalized communities like scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. For example, according to the report, the average years of schooling for Muslim children between the ages of 7 to 16 is much lower than that of other socio-religious communities, as on page number 56. Economic and social marginalization experienced by Muslims has other dimensions as well. Like other minorities, Muslim customs and practices are sometimes quite distinct from what is seen as the mainstream. Read the data related to schooling provided by the Sachar Committee report. 25% of Muslim children in the 6 to 14 year age group have either never been enrolled in school or have dropped out. This percentage is much higher than that of any socio-religious community. As on page number 58. Do you think special measures are required to address this situation? Page number 90 Some, not all, Muslims may wear a burqa, sport a long beard, wear a fez, and these become ways to identify all Muslims. Because of this, they tend to be identified differently and some people think they are not like the rest of us. Often this becomes an excuse to treat them unfairly and discriminate against them. Do you remember reading in your class 7 book about how the Ansaris were finding it difficult to rent a house? The social marginalization of Muslims in some instances has led them to migrating from the places where they have lived, often leading to the ghettoization of the community. Sometimes this prejudice leads to hatred and violence. I live in a Muslim-dominated area. Some days back during Ramzan, there was some disturbance that started taking a communal outlook. My brother and I had gone for an iftar party in the neighborhood and were dressed in traditional clothes, that is Sherwani and Salwar Kameez respectively. On returning home, my brother and I were asked to change our clothes to jeans and t-shirt. Now when everything is fine, I wonder what was the reason that we were asked to change our clothes and why I didn't find it odd. Were our clothes giving away our identity? And is that identity linked to all kinds of fears and discrimination? An essay by Annie A. Faruqi. The above essay has been written by a child around your age. What do you think she is trying to convey? In the above section of this chapter, we saw how in the case of the Muslim community, there is a link between economic and social marginalization. Earlier in this chapter, you read about the situation of Adivasis. In your class 7 book, you read about the unequal status of women in India. The experiences of all these groups point to the fact that marginalization is a complex phenomenon requiring a variety of strategies, measures and safeguards to redress this situation. All of us have a stake in protecting the rights defined in the constitution and the laws and policies framed to realize these rights. Without these, we will never be able to protect the diversity that makes our country unique, nor realize the state's commitment to promote equality for all. The above was page number 90. Page number 91. Conclusion In this chapter, we have tried to understand what it means to be a marginalized community. We have tried to look at this through the experiences of different marginalized communities. There are different reasons for each of these communities being marginalized. Each experiences marginalization in different ways. We have also seen that marginalization is linked to experiencing disadvantage, prejudice and powerlessness. In India, there are several more marginalized communities like Dalits, of whom you will read more in the next chapter. Marginalization results in having a low social status and not having equal access to education and other resources. Yet, the lives of marginalized people can and do change. Thus, no one is marginalized all the time in exactly the same way. If we go back to the two examples of marginalization we have discussed, we will see that each of these groups has a long history of struggle and resistance. Marginalized communities want to maintain their cultural distinctiveness while having access to rights, development and other opportunities. In the next chapter, we will read about how different groups have confronted marginalization.
The Sachar Committee report also debunked other prevalent myths about Muslims. It is commonly believed that the Muslims prefer to send their children to madrasas. The figures show that only 4% of Muslim children are in madrasas, whereas 66% attend government schools and 30% private schools, as on page number 75. Page number 92. Exercises 1. Write in your own words two or more sentences of what you understand by the word marginalization. 2. List two reasons why Adivasis are becoming increasingly marginalized. 3. Write one reason why you think the Constitution's safeguards to protect minority communities are very important. 4. Reread the section on minorities and marginalization. What do you understand by the term minority? 5. You are participating in a debate where you have to provide reasons to support the following statement. Muslims are a marginalized community. Using the data provided in this chapter, list two reasons that you would give. 6. Imagine that you are watching the Republic Day Parade on TV with a friend and she remarks, Look at these tribals, they look so exotic and they seem to be dancing all the time. List three things that you would tell her about the lives of Adivasis in India. 7. In the storyboard, you read about how Helen hopes to make a movie on the Adivasi story. Can you help her by developing a short story on Adivasis? 8. Would you agree with the statement that economic marginalization and social marginalization are interlinked? Why? Page number 93. Glossary. Hierarchy. A graded system or arrangement of persons or things. Usually, Persons at the bottom of the hierarchy are those who have the least power. The caste system is a hierarchical system and Dalits are considered to be at the lowest end. Ghettoization A ghetto is an area or locality that is populated largely by members of a particular community. Ghettoization refers to the process that leads to such a situation that may occur due to various social, cultural and economic reasons. Fear or hostility may also compel a community to group together as they feel more secure living amongst their own. Often a ghettoized community has a few options of moving out, which may lead to them becoming alienated from the rest of the society. Mainstream Literally, this refers to the main current of a river or stream. In this chapter, it is used to refer to a cultural context in which the customs and practices that are followed are those of the dominant community. In connection with this, mainstream is also used to refer to those people or communities that are considered to be at the center of a society, that is, often the powerful or dominant group. Displaced In the context of this chapter, this refers to people who are forced or compelled to move from their homes for big development projects, including dams, mining, etc. Militarized an area where the presence of the armed forces is considerable. Malnourished A person who does not get adequate nutrition or food. The chapter 7 of total 10 chapters of the book ends here. Narrator Vasundhara Bose You were just listening to this audio book. Technical Control Bati Langlingdo Technical Assistance Vikas Sangwan Assistance in Production Amit Kumar Direction and Production Vimalesh Chaudhary This audiobook is brought to you by CIET NCERT New Delhi India